thinking of cutting the cord, the cable cord. Here's a few things to keep in mind if you do. First of all, don't just cut the cord. I understand the need to want to save money, and there is money to be saved in cutting the cord and going for a few other options in combination. But the first thing that you want to do is find out what is most important to you in terms of your digital content consumption? What are you looking to get? Are you looking to get entertainment, news, sports, movies, cooking shows, reality TV? You want to make a list of all the things that you want to get out of your entertainment subscriptions and then look for the options that work best for you. Netflix is great when you want to be able to get all of the past seasons of, of shows of interest in one sitting and to be able to browse through, read captions, and essentially binge watch when your time allows. It's not the place to go to get current episodes of your favorite shows unless they are Netflix originals, in which case they are usually released by the season, and then you can watch it anytime you want. Netflix does have a really good movie selection and has a great platform for being able to build your playlists, including kid-friendly lists, um, for your entertainment needs. The other option is to go to Hulu. Hulu is great for, again, being able to access past seasons of things, but also being able to watch current seasons and current episodes. It's usually a uh, current episode is released the next day after it's been broadcast on cable and then is available to uh, for access uh, sometimes up to a week, sometimes more. It really depends on the producer of that particular video. It has actually come up uh, in recent years in offering more movie selections, if that's something that's of interest to you. My personal opinion is I still prefer Netflix for that. And the other options out there for more on-demand viewing of programming is Amazon Prime. Now, I personally use it more for the delivery method, um, for, for getting, uh, you know, uh, on shipping of items that I buy off of Amazon. A lot of what you can find on Amazon Prime Video is already available on Hulu and Netflix, and it's a, the layout of the, of the application that you would use to find those programs are better on Hulu and Netflix. I'm not a fan of how Amazon lays out its video. Uh, video services and the ability to save and search and, and things like that. I'd much prefer to go to to uh, to a Hulu or a Netflix. Another option out there if you want to get more uh, real-time viewing is Sling TV. That is an internet broadcast for live streaming of programming. But uh, now I don't know a lot about it, but my understanding is, is it's mostly live streaming of programming, not so much the on-demand um, kind of DVR versions that, um, that a Netflix or Hulu is geared towards. But still might be a viable option, especially if you're into sports and things like that. It looks like it has a, a pretty decent package for that, uh, where you're not really finding that as much on a Hulu or a Netflix. So... Those are some paid services. Um, there's also paid services out there for, for reading apps. Texture is a wonderful app where you can get access for $10 a month to a variety of magazines, probably close to 100 different titles everywhere from, from sports to entertainment, news, uh, politics, fashion, gardening, cooking, anything. You name it, you can, uh, you know, it has a wide variety of magazines for which you can get current issues and a couple years of back issues with your subscription. You can put it on your mobile device and read it on the go. You can download things to store on your device for when you don't have internet access. It's really a great app. There's also services through Amazon Kindle for anybody who's an avid reader. And um, so that might be worth looking into as a monthly subscription. But in terms of things like texture and sling Hulu and Netflix, all told, those combined are about a $50 a month bill that you would be getting divided among various services. And that's sort of the trade-off. I mean, you you might be dropping one service in terms of your cable or, or, or dish package uh, and instead uh, having to maintain multiple other services and accounts in order to get your content. But hopefully the result is, is that you're going to get 
your money is going to go towards and the effort will go towards more of the type of content that you want to be able to consume. So when you start adding in some of the other services, if you were to do an Amazon Prime or some of the other paid services through Amazon Kindle and uh, and things like that, then you could start getting up to a monthly bill that, that is equal to that of what you're maybe trying to leave behind with a cable or dish service. But again, it's what you're getting for the money. The other thing that you want to keep in mind is, is that when you're cutting the cord, a lot of these services, while they do kind of indicate that you can get your local news through them, a lot of the times it's only when you sign in with an active cable subscription. So if local news is important to you, you're going to want to see if, if there's other ways for you to access it. One of the free ways that you can do that is by um, signing up for a Twitter or Facebook account. Now, it You'd have to sign up with an email address and a password. Neither of these require that you post. I mean, it's, they're built to be social, but quite frankly, you don't have to interact. And Twitter is probably one of the best ways to start to curate different lists of uh, news stories that you might want to follow. A lot of the local news organizations have Twitter accounts. They post headlines along with links to their stories or videos um, that are going to, some of which will be featured on, on your local six o'clock news. So in that sense, um, you won't really miss it. You'll still have access to it. And in fact, maybe a few more headlines that you wouldn't otherwise. You can also access newspapers and things like that. They'll post links to feature stories. So it's a good way to keep a pulse on things that are happening locally and nationally uh, nationally, and, and in the state, as well as to curate lists on, on other topic matter that you're interested in. Um, so again, all this goes down to that. If, if you're considering cutting the cord, um, you know, there's a potential one that you, it could save you some money, depending on what services you decide, if any, to put in place of that. Uh, but it also could be that you'd spend the same money, but just get more for it in terms of the type of media and content that you want access to. Please uh, remember that before you make any big decisions, really start with a list of what it is that you and your family want for media consumption and, and you know, how often are you okay with having to wait a little while until it becomes available or do you want more immediate gratification? Things like that are all things that you want to consider in addition to the pricing of your uh, potential options for media. Thank you.